Good evening. Good morning, Rose. This is Hi, TMS Canada. Roundtable Global. We are around the world, like like Corona. <laughs> we are around the world. No, but we don't want to know about Corona. <laughs> so we're we not talking, out of we're not talking about who's getting vaccinated. We are here. Um, and Rose will introduce our guests, but I just wanted to remind you in case you forgot that my name's Dr. Tova Goldfine, and this is TMS Roundtable Global. And I'm just so happy to come back every Monday night and age gracefully with you, Rose. Oh, thank you. Thanks a million. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should age ungracefully or okay. disgracefully, I mean. Yes. <laughs> it's much more fun. Yes. Yeah. Now, Aurea is an urban shaman. Now, I had to Google shaman because I thought it was a witch doctor. So, <laughs> but apparently it's a healer. And the shaman actually comes from the Amazon. And I on Wikipedia, there was even a photo of a witch doctor. But Aurea doesn't have the feather in his nose. No. No. <laughs> no. And he doesn't have the beads around his neck either that the shaman has. And he's wearing a shirt. Yes. Not That's undressed. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, but in actual fact, to put the jokes aside, this gentleman has moved from being, um, uh, I suppose, uh, a bit of a lost child to being fully, fully able to help others. And that's why we were very happy that he's um, decided to join us. But first of all, I'd like him to give us a little verbal bio of his own life and so that so that when when you listeners and watchers are, are seeing what's what he's doing now you see where he's come from and his journey because that's important so over to you all right all right <laughs> it's interesting because if you would have asked me a couple months back maybe three months ago to give you my bio and to tell you my story uh, I would either be very excited to tell you my story because I have invested 40 years in my story. I've been interpreted, I understood it. I have been fully invested in unpacking the specific chapters in my life, what they mean, and how each story beat took me all the way up here. Or I would be totally freaked out not knowing what do I, which part do I share? Why should I, should I share it? All of which to qualify why I'm here or what makes me a good teacher, what makes me a good person. And I don't know, I don't mean to burst uh, your bubble, but today at this point of my life, I have come to a place where I realize that in order for me to serve, in order for me to be a shaman, is I've had to go through a transformation journey where I'm not identified by my story. It doesn't mean it doesn't exist, but I get to create and recreate and choose the way I tell my story at any given moment. And that's actually what my understanding and experience of shamanism is. A shaman is a bridge between the real world, so to speak, the 3D reality, the one we experience with our senses, and the dream world, or the dreamer's world, where everything arises out of. And when I was introduced to shamanism 10 years ago in California, the shaman kept coming around and telling us that what he is doing, or the intention of the work, is to help us, remind us who we are so we can dream again. Beautiful. Wow. Uh, well, it's beautiful. Can you expand on that a little yes, bit? Yes, of course. You mean dream like go to sleep and dream or dream about yeah. things I want or where I want to go? The Aborigine here from Australia, the Aboriginal uh, way of dreaming. You see, the elders in all societies, Aborigine, Shamanism, Native Americans, uh, the Jews have their own uh, visions and uh, secret rooms. Uh, what is where substances is being used in order to elicit connection to the dream world the dream world or the dreamers world is the is the metaphor for 
it's not a metaphor, it's, a, it's the portal into the endless Ein Sof in Kabbalah. In Kabbalah, it's called Ein Sof, and quantum physics is dark matter, the world of possibilities. It's everything that we do not see, yet we know exists. Everything that beyond what we are seeing. Uh, shamans, healers, elders, anyone that has had a glimpse of the truth knows now, I might challenge you for a second, and that's okay. Knows and recognizes that the world in which we perceive, the reality in which we live in day to day, is actually, that's why telling you my story, I'm cautious, is actually a reflection of our inner dream. Psychology in science, we could still explain that as, you know, we are the product of our environment, our behaviors, our DNA, our, our environment. But on a very, very deep level, people already know that deep inside, that is why we have this yearning, this longing, this clinging, this wanting to experience something bigger than us. Because we know, we do know that by the time we are experiencing this reality, by the time we are seeing what we are seeing, it's a, a little bit after the fact. What would I mean by then? Right now we have a Facebook Live, Yes. correct? Yes. But technically speaking, you could take a video, a recorded video, and you can upload it to Facebook and many different applications. And as long as you tell it to broadcast it live, it will. So a lot of the live videos that we are watching, they're actually not live, I will record before, but it might take us some time to integrate that fact, you know. Okay. So imagine that your life, that you're living day to day, what you're experiencing as live has actually been dreamed up by your neshama, by your soul, by your dreamer, by the collective unconscious and your own unique expression of it. And I know this is the core of TMS. This is the core well, of the I'm mind. Sorry. The only one who understands you right now is probably Michael Galinsky, <laughs> who's, who's watching. But now, please connect it to healing. Please connect so, it to self healing because that would that would help. Rosa of course, and of course. If life and life is a journey, and we have an incarnation to live out, we have a dharma to play out in this life. And dharma means purpose. Dharma means that yeah, our soul continues to come here in, in a way to get to know itself and to remember it to even greater capacity who and what we are and and a way for the creator to get to know itself is through us we are literally made in the image of the creator we know that we know in all the holy scriptures and saints and sages they all talk about some sort of oneness so far so good in the seven seven chakras in the chakra system there are really seven planes of reality the seventh one being oneness the first one being all about security and separation. Actually, the bottom three is about object subject. The top three is going up and higher and higher. In the seventh chakra, there is only one. In the seventh chakra, there's only one. When we say Shema Israel, which is the you know the prayer that uh, the Lord is one, we know that that the Lord is one. It means one, not one plus one or one plus you. And in all of the traditions, whether it's meditations or shamanism, or anytime we do any real self-work, anytime, we ultimately get to a place where what? We take responsibility for our creator abilities in our lives. It's a lifelong journey. And shamanism and psychedelics, they're all methods and glimpses into the fact and the, and the knowledge that we are constantly dreaming this reality. As far as our journeys, what happens to us and what we experience is always means in which gets us closer to that truth, to that remembrance journey. So when we experience pain and suffering and negativity, we know that, we know that in a very deep way that that is our own karma, our own soul, our own incarnation, bringing us closer to God, bringing us closer to the truth that we are the ones that are dreaming this. 
So when, whether it's an hypnosis or TMS or any, you know, any type of healing work, real healers, if I may say, use their energy to communicate properly, use their energy in order to provide a safe space for the patient, client, uh, whatever, uh, student, for, to the, for themselves to experience a sense of wholeness so they can dream up a new, a new healed experience of themselves. Healing starts inside. We all know the story of Joe Dispenza. I mean, we love him, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, sitting, laying in the hospital, hearing that he's never going to have, he's never going to walk again, understanding the mechanics of the body and rebuilding his vertebrae hours at a time, all within himself, dreaming himself a new vertebrae, dreaming himself a new reality, taking ownership to his creator. See, that's, that's why I'm, I'm not really attached to my story anymore because I realized that everything that I have experienced, which I have a lot, has been designed in order to bring me closer to the ultimate truth. And the ultimate truth is that the greatest, and uh, you guys can ask me some questions. So the greatest addiction, the greatest illusion, the greatest lie that humanity is suffering from is that there is a power outside of you. There is something outside of you that you have to become, control, uh, heal, be a part of, get up to whatever it might be. And all the systems and the methods, including religion, they have really good meaning. They have, those are good breadcrumbs on the journey home. Those are good practices in order to take you inside. But so, the so I'm going to interrupt you. Like, one, one second, okay. one second. Okay. If everything leads back to inside, everything, all shamanism, psychedelics, psychoactives, taking substances, they all take you back to the mm -hmm. dream world. Uh, meditations, TMS, hypnosis, everything, all real, anything that actually works points inside. It points inward. And there comes a point, there comes a point in, in life. It could be death, but hopefully sooner, depending on your trip on this lifetime, you come face to face with just like the Truman Show. You guys remember the movie, The Truman Show? You have that wall and Jim Carrey sees that he lives inside a, a studio. We, if we're lucky, if we're blessed, if we have the right, right guides and support, we come face to face with that truth. We come face to face with that wall and we take responsibility for our creativity or lack thereof. We start to pay, we realize that we are always creating our lives. We're either victim to our own creation or taking responsibility and allowing life to be a partner, allowing, see, I want to let you ask the question, but something very important. I had an amazing, I grew up religious. I was first 14, 16 years of my life, I was praying every day, three times a day, put on tefillin, I studied Torah, I studied a lot of things, and I had an amazing relationship with God. Yes, I had a lot of issues with the environment, uh, with the religious environment. I saw a lot of hypocrisy, and I experienced a lot of, you know, abuse in terms of and numbness, that lack of respect, lack of education, lack of consciousness between one person to another. And, but I didn't, I didn't lose my, uh, my relationship with God. I would pray as a kid and I prayed as an adult and I always had really, really good um, results. You know, when I really needed something, when I really prayed, when I surrendered to higher power, it always worked. And yet, I still missed something. That was, I still missed something. Only until recently, that's why the whole show is called The Journey to, from Trauma to Dharma. Only recently, and it wasn't psychedelics, and it wasn't anything on the outside uh, that reminded me, that showed me that 
this God, this power that I have had such a good relationship with, I actually secretly put it on the outside of me. I believed it was outside of me. And that continue, I continued to give away my power. I continued to trust in something that I thought that I still have to earn and I still have to become a better person in order to be included in the garden with God. And only when I remember that this power, this great power that I've been praying to and that takes care of us, it is within me. I have access to it. I am not the only God. I'm not the only creator. But in my reality, in my universe, in my existence, I have the power of God. And taking responsibility and no, look at all of my life. And we can go and we can talk about interesting things. We can talk about you know, growing up in a childhood where there was religion and ultra-orthodoxy and I went to very super strict schools and my, my, and my parents were very spiritual and uh, uh, professional seekers. They were also uh, confused and troubled by their own uh, tendencies and addictions to substances. Back in the day, I would look at it and look at it as maybe I had a challenging childhood and it was tr and I, you know, I had to beat the odds. Now, as I look at it, mm -hmm. I recognize that everything in my life, including my own journey with religion, with substance abuse, has all been in my journey, and I believe that it is yours too, to take responsibility and recognize that the biggest lie, the biggest illusion, the biggest addiction and is that you need something on the outside. And just like in the Garden of Eden, that metaphor of God saying to Adam and Eve, you can do whatever you want here. Just do not eat from that tree. Do not eat from the tree of knowledge. Because once you bite into it, once you believe there is something outside of you, you're, you're out. You're out. You're out of the garden. You're not hanging out with the Creator anymore. And we are on this journey, all of us, of remembering, remembering that we are, and this whole journey that we have created for ourselves is to show us, to show us to create our own antagonistic powers, to create our own resistance, to choose a path in which one day, one day, you look in the mirror and you go, wow. It's all been me, the higher me, the bigger me, the dreamer me, the soul that is here to incarnate, to surrender to being in this form and, and not fight the form. The soul that is, that is decided to experience itself through the body and through the 3D reality instead of fighting it. And the religion that I grew up in and addictions that my parents suffered from and I suffered from, if you want, we could talk about all the interesting things, but truth, now I recognize, now I see that it was all the apple, okay? I was biting the apples. I was identifying with being an entrepreneur, or with a shaman, or with a rabbi, or by being an addict, or not being an addict, or even worse, I was identifying with someone who is in a healing journey, and I have something to accomplish and become. And it's all part of the training. It's all part of this thing to say, okay, I can enjoy the garden. I can look at the apples. I don't have to bite into it. I don't have to believe it. Because once you do, once you give it a name, like you know, in the healing work, once you give your disease a name, once you start forming your belief around you are an addict, you are a sick person, the first thing you guys do in your work is reframe it. The first thing I'm sure you do is say, hey, tell a different story. Exactly. Yeah. That's what shamanism is. That's what being a shaman is. It's waking you up to tell new stories. It is tshuva, re uh, forgiveness isn't some, you know, we're almost at Christmas. Forgiveness. Forgiveness is basically saying, uh, rewriting reality. Rewriting reality and saying, Everything that I've experienced, including the negative, I forgive, I accept, I see that it's all been bringing me closer to the ultimate, ultimate truth. And 
I'll just say that with this in mind, now I can see shamanism and substance and religion. It can all be a good thing. It can all be a wonderful thing as long as you are taking ayahuasca as the creator taking ayahuasca. You're not a victim of your sleep looking to take ayahuasca to hopefully awaken. You can, my father recently died from uh, whatever. He always was scared that he's going to die from cigarettes, and he died from cigarettes. He didn't smoke the cigarettes. The cigarettes smoked him. My grandmother is 95. She smokes every day. She's smoking the cigarettes. She's not afraid of the cigarettes. The cigarettes are afraid of her. Yeah, I've met them both. It's so true. <laughs> it's a big distinction. Like, it's, it's such a wonderful distinction. Go ahead. You know what? Smoke your cigarettes. Go to your journeys. Do whatever it is that you're doing. But just remember, you're the one doing it. Do it. You know, a lot of when I was a shaman, I, was, I had a love-hate relationship when I was a shaman using psychedelics and substances. I had a love-hate relationship with it because I saw that I'm using something on the outside and I feared that without the substance, I'm no longer a shaman. So the story that I was running is my value is the substance. I was battling the truth. And the truth is, I am a shaman, and if I want to use substance, I can. And because my whole life has taken me to a point where I literally saw power outside of me, good or bad, but it was outside. Substance was outside. Enlightenment was outside. Teachers were outside. There was an outside world. Even my wife, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm with her for 10 years. And it took me a long time to look at my wife and realize that if I feel rejected or unwanted or I have any issues with her, it's not her. It was it's never her. Yeah. She, there is nothing. That's a weird thing to believe. There is nothing that my wife can give me that I don't already have. Exactly. It takes away all of decades of trouble. It, you go ahead, roll up their joint. Just know. Just know. Because people say, oh, I want to quit smoking. I want Listen, before you quit whatever, just look at it and say, who is smoking who? Who owns who? <laughs> go to synagogue. Go to church. It's good practices because it takes you back inside. But do not, do not give all your power away because that's where disease comes in. That's where... It, a trauma comes in. That's where life's autocorrect comes in and shows you here is where you are still doubting your creatorness. Here is where you're still doubting the fact that you are made in God's image. This is where you're still pretending to be, you know, like not worthy of your divinity. And I have been on this trip knowing knowing that I suspect, I suspected that I have something to tell, to do with my reality. But, and I'm grateful and humbled that we create a very unique journey, and I invite you to look at yours. We create a very unique journey that basically takes us back inside and gets us to look in the mirror and go, hey, creator, it's been a while. And, and, you, and when you take 100% responsibility for being the source, it's a, it's, a, it's a doozy. I've only been you know, doing it not that long, maybe since I turned 40. And you take 100% responsibility for your back pains, for your suffering, for your wishes, for your dream. When you recognize that you are the battery behind your life source, Things take a different turn. You, you, you can become your own ayahuasca, your own ecstasy, your own shaman, your own guru. So, long answer. Go ahead, Rose. You're, you're, you're on. I'm okay. Just well, the, re the thing I want to know is how do you translate that out to someone to be able to actually look inward? How do you translate that? 
see so you've that's why i said about your bio because something changed you had some sort of transition and you've talked about your your background and what you've discovered but there, there was a point and that's what i'd like to be able to translate out to people watching there was a point where you said i'm going to smoke i'm going to smoke the cigarette the cigarette isn't going to smoke me and that's the point that i'm wondering where where that happened where that so so i'm going to share with you i want to share with you that i'm wondering if somebody told me all this stuff five years ago if what would i think you know i i, I i've been watching gaia documentaries my whole life i <laughs> Uh, I've seen the secret. It really helped me because I realized, oh, there's some truth here. And then you start hearing updates. You don't attract what you want. You attract what you are. And all these things start to tell you, like Joe Dispenza and people telling you to go into dream state and to reimagine and evaluate and look at your life. And, to, and people go into uh, altered states and they take a lot of substances and they connect into the dream world. And it, puts them back into the, the state of creator. It all makes sense. And a lot of us know quantum physics and we realize that the reality which is we're experiencing is a collapsed reality from the observer. That's all good. How, you know, if I was walking around for 40 years, 40 years I was walking around giving my power away. Even through the height of my experiences, even through the height of my spiritual experiences, I still gave my power away. And only after I suffered, quote unquote, death, whether it's my own father or moving completely to a new country and restarting again, letting go of my stories. That was a good opening. <laughs> That was a good opening to be very stubborn and to say, see, I've had this stubbornness saying, I want to remember who I am. There is something here that I know I'm here to experience, I'm here to do. I'm touching it, I'm feeling it. I don't, ac I don't, accept, I don't accept what I'm seeing as the ultimate reality. I just refuse, you refuse to accept whatever doesn't truly feel right to you, what doesn't make sense to you, you go deeper and deeper and deeper. Now, for me, that meant, still does, more time by myself. I'm not just talking about meditation. I'm talking about there is the I and there is the M. There is space between the I, the, the observer, and the M, the experiencer. To come back to the spaces, to start recognizing the, the conversations that you're having with yourself, that there is a thinker, there is a listener, mm -hmm. and there is a dream that's, you know, there is a show that all of it is playing out of. Mm -hmm. The, if you knew for a fact, if you knew for a fact that the only goal you have in life is to remember who you are, and mm -hmm. to remember to fuse yourself with your creator, to fuse, to become one, right. to surrender to your oneness, to surrender to your creator. How would you do it? Honestly, it's already there. If you're listening to this, if you are part of this conversation, if you haven't turned this off, go, oh, what the hell is this all about? <laughs> and no, really, then you already know. You already know. You already know. It's just so tempting. You see, it's so tempting to. First thing, I'm going to interrupt you like a good right. assembly. Okay, you ready? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm. I understand you, but it's a little bit. It's a little bit like high for me. I know Michael Galinsky's here talking, and he understands you, and probably could talk to you all night about this. I think Rose understands you, but I. I think the majority of people because of the way the world has taken us away from ourself, because of the medical community has taken us away from ourself, there are people who, who just can't connect to this. And those people will get lost by the wayside. And I don't know how we can bridge that, bridge the people who like, 
What do you mean my body created cancer or pain? What do you mean? I'll tell you what's been very helpful to me. So so break yeah. it down, make it, make it, make, break it down to like kindergarten. No, so, no, 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 no kindergarten level. I'll tell you something. It's very, I, Kabbalah, you know, I come from Kabbalah. It's part of my lineage. I was born into Kabbalah. I was named by a Kabbalah. It's a whole thing. Uh, just say, say to the listeners what Kabbalah is. No, this it's a mystical side. Of, it's, the, it's the reality making. It's the reality making side of uh, of Jewish mysticism. It's, so it's, it's demystifying reality, explaining the ten layers of reality, and 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 giving you a breakdown of where one might get. Too. So it's the now, spirit. If it was about. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Listen, listen. I'm going to be very honest with you. I just can just be honest with you about my experience. I've always suspected that all these drawings and all these pretty, like, mystical hidden texts and words, they are riddles. They are riddles that are supposed to confuse you for a second to have a glimpse of who you really are. And if the mind wants to understand things, it's like an iPhone and an Android sitting around talking and saying, well, I wonder who, who, who is our developer. And the truth is, as a smartphone, your only job is to communicate. Your only job is to be a, a device. You're not going to sit around and unpack who Steve Jobs is. It's mm -hmm. just not going to happen. But we have a tendency to do that because it makes us feel good. Our intellect has become you know, the, 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 the God, our, 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 yeah. fit, our, our mind has become the God. So the only thing, if, if, I, if I'm talking to someone who is extremely confused, they're not interested, uh, honestly. But there are hundreds and thousands, if not millions of people who suspect, who suspect that they do have the power, who suspect that we do have access to unlimited power and unlimited potential. It does live in our dream side. Reality is real, but it's not separate from us. People outside are real, but they're not separate from us. I would rather right now, and we can try to unpack it, I would rather right now use my time to encourage all the people who are actually suspecting this to be true. Right. And they, you know, they might be like fidgeting right now, looking for, you know, rolling the next joint or thinking about right. the next so journey or going to the next yoga trip or doing the next thing that will bring them closer to God. There is nothing, there's nothing more powerful than acknowledging and admitting that everything you're looking for already exists inside. Now, if you want to break it down, if you want to have some sort of like, okay, go well, let's, every- Let's answer some questions. There's yes. some, so, so Susie is, is, is really, really, really saying what, what's, what the issue is for a lot of us. This resonates so much for her, but the hardest part is how it can alienate you. So respond to that because it is a lonely road for people like all of us who are like the John Sarnos. I mean, he Perfect. was alienated. Perfect. I mean, people watch the movie and they cry not for Michael Galinsky, but for John Sarno, who has no, he had no friends. So good. So now I'm talking to the, to us. Okay. The community of uh, healers, you know, magicians, wizards, shamans, the truth. We want the truth. We're searching for the truth. We're, spe we're special people. We're a special tribe. The truth is that inside, once we accept our inner world, our dream, our inner dream, as the only truth there is, there is a, you could grieve it, you could feel a sense of loneliness for a second, you could recognize that what you were looking for all along, the sense of acceptance and community and to be validated, and you're probably never going to get the way you've been trained to get. This place mm. that we're trying to get to, this being somebody, being somebody who is seen, nurtured, loved, that on its own is kind of part of the illusion. Now, when you recognize, when you remember yourself as the creator, when you recognize that you are here to live out an incarnation, that you are here, that your real freedom, my real freedom, is through this form, not in spite of it. Again, freedom 
is through this incarnation and in spite of it, then it becomes the, you become a nexus of belonging. We become a presence to belong to. Yes, all the old style validation seeking, wanting to be accepted, it is a tough, right now we live in a world that our ugliest fears, our deepest shadows is exposed. There is a unknown threat out there and it's freaking everyone out a lot more than all the millions and thousands of known problems we have. It is showing us a bug in the system. It's actually showing us that we are creating from a place of lack, from a place of there, we are not safe instead of being creators. So us being activated and initiated to go into isolation and recognize that at the end of the day, it is we are all in God's Zoom rooms. This is a way for us to activate our own light and to recognize that in order for us not to feel alone and not to feel alienated, it is us. We are the ones like right now are, are reaching out. We feel whole and complete and raw and vulnerable with ourselves, with ourselves. I am sorry to break it to you. There is literally no one out there that will give us what we're looking for. Not a politician, not a vaccine, not any sense of safety. This is about independence. This is about freedom. We are reclaiming our freedom to create. We're reclaiming our own freedom to go from a place of fear and lack to a place of responsibility. Um, I was more lonely for 40 years trying to be someone. I was a lot more alienated, hoping to fit in, trying to fit in. I was very vested in my story of success and failure and success and failure and, and, and my parents. And it was very lonely, honestly. It was extremely lonely, even when I was at place surrounded with hundreds of people because I didn't take responsibility and I was still looking for the outside world to validate me. It's a weird journey, I admit. It's a weird journey to look inward and to take responsibility for my dream. All of a sudden, you're never alone and you're always alone. You're yeah. always alone because it's you and the dream. It's you, hey, vav, hey. it's you and God. You're never alone because the entire world exists within you. Everybody that, if I, in the past, I would look at my wife and I would want something and I would resent her, I would resent myself. Or Now I know that anytime I feel that, if I want anything from her, the only thing I can do is give it to her. Sounds very cliche. This sense of alienation that we are feeling is only because we were trained and taught in the lie. And the lie is that there is something outside of you that you must get. There is something outside of you that you must get to. We are trained to be alienated. So now the healer's wound, like the biggest wound that we have, is that people don't see us and people don't, like, uh, you know, we're so strange, we're so weird. Good. Very good. We come from the dream world. We have one foot in the dream and all possibility in healing and the matrix of all possibilities. And we got the other foot deeply entrenched in the, in the 3D reality and in the fears. It is our work. It is our job to shine through this. It is literally our entire purpose is to remember our true essence well, and to remember we traded in i mean i'm responding to susie what what's what we traded in is our identity and our integrity you know for pain so it's one or the other i i, I want to answer i want to i want to really i don't know if i want to answer susie i want to acknowledge susie yeah. because she says it doesn't really answer the question if you also want to create and contribute as well as live your own truth i guess 
I, I'm interested to know, you know, tell me more because what I've come to is the only way for me to create and contribute is to, is to live my own truth. Uh, and what I have to deal with as we speak is battle and conquer my own fears, my own doubts saying, no, you're not the creator. You're not responsible. You're not a good boy. You didn't fit in. You didn't do right. Uh, me, the more I, the more I confront that, the more you confront your own fears that you are, re, you know, not wanted or alienated or rejected or not have what to give or not good enough to just be you and contribute. Then, it is literally the journey from trauma to dharma. See, I used to believe the trauma and drama is what took me away from God. It's what took me away from my body. It's what took me away from everyday life. And I've had to work to heal, to become whole again, in order for me to be a functioning, functional human being. But now I recognize that the trauma that I've experienced and the drama that I've experienced was really a, a way in reverse back to God. It, it was like that Rumi quote, light comes in through the cracks. It was my way in. It was what brought me out of sleep. It's what brought me out of this victim mentality. It seems that we become victims at first, but no, we get out of being trapped to having no control and having no power because we get smacked literally right out of hypnosis, right out of uh, society norms. And if you start tracing your trauma, you start tracing your drama, you start noticing how from that moment on, you've been on the search back to yourself, back to your own divinity, back to God, taking responsibility for the God in you, everything starts to make sense. and. You know, contribute, live your own truth. The beauty, the beauty is once you take full responsibility for your life, for your creation abilities, you don't have to be a, you know, a healer or a coach or some kind of a shaman to contribute. Anything you do is a contribution because you're not experiencing the world is separate from you. You're not experiencing like yourself trying to strive, trying to get somewhere. You pay attention to this world as a sacred act of presence. And it's a sacred play of souls all around the world and consciousness, waking into the truth of our own creatorship. Then whatever we can do to love, to open our heart, to make the space safer for people around us, uh, that becomes the path home is the kindness, the gentleness, the love, the open heartedness, ultimately, ultimately accepting yourself. If you feel alone, if you feel alienated, that's the invitation. It's the, fe it's the feeling of separation. It's the place where you feel separated from the world. It is as if there is a world outside of you that you're trying to fit into. When you realize that you've created and co-created with the dream of life itself, the perfect journey for you, you've created a perfect journey for you to go from alienation to belonging, mm -hmm. to go from I'm alienated to I belong because I exist. And the capacity of the world outside of me not understanding me is my invitation to integrate into it with love, to find my way to spread more love and more light and more healing into the world. And we all do it by different ways. We all do it in whatever ways the creator, you, wants to get to know itself. The only reason a creator creates is to get to know itself. That is why we're here. Or we're not we're not laughing any we're not laughing yet. Oh, uh, you want it to be funny? That's okay. The whole thing is funny. No, it's okay. You're you're yeah. amazing. So Patty has been very consistent with um, her questions, and um, I know Ooh. Patty struggles with some ongoing chronic pain. So first, she wants to know if this is part of if this is um, her first question was 
is that power in the subconscious mind? And then the second question is, so there's a conflict within that is what is causing the TMS and the pain. Yes, yes. Yeah. The, the, the conflict is the invitation. The conflict so is the invitation. And Michael Brown says the pain is the, and the conflict is the messenger. So it's... Like simple. I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. Uh, I've, for as long as I remember, I've had head, lower back pains. Now, when I got into the spiritual world, I realized that lower back pains is translated to feeling, to not feeling supported in the world. Uh, and yes, growing up with religion and abuse and drugs and uh, having to fend for myself and not feeling good enough for, you know, three decades will definitely give me some feelings of not being supported. Now, I could go and I could go to Tova and I can get sessions every week. I could do regression. I could do hypnosis. I've done ayahuasca. I have experienced a lot of healing. Like I've done sessions where I didn't have pain for years. I could do, go talk to Tova and I'm fine. And um, I can write off this truth. I can write off the truth for X amount of time. But until I feel supported, until I feel supported, until I know that I am the source of my own support, I am support. Until I remember that I am the support in my life, it will keep showing up. It will just continue to show up. And we have a variety of healers and, 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 and methods and ways to come back and to help us and to guide us and to midwife a new dream for us and to midwife a new possibility for us. Tova could do sessions with you. You can, so many ways you can have, like I said, many methods that will take you back to a place where you see a new possibility for you. You know, if you have to forgive your parents or you have to forgive yourself, and if part of your story is to make amends with your past, that's fine. But most of us are addicted to the story. We get so much pleasure out of our story and out of the pain and out of everything that's happened to us that it's much more sexy to know what we're dealing with and to be on the healing journey than to just be support. Now, that's a big shift and it's a big shift, but it's, it's the only choice we have left. And then you can look at TMS and ayahuasca and healers as like assistants and reminders to what you know is true. And what you know is true is that you are in charge and the pain and suffering that we are feeling, the pain and suffering that we are experiencing are life's way to tell us, eh, 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 you're still doubting this, you're still not taking responsibility. You're still not acknowledging your creatorness. And whatever path we take, you know, I, I, I literally started 10 years ago with this whole idea of self-love. 10 years, like nonstop of recognizing that, you know, I have to love myself and I have to take care of myself. Why did nobody whisper to me at the right time, at the right place that, I am the source and I'm creating this. Maybe because I would have thought that there were narcissistic psychopaths because that's the place I was in. Why do I have nothing else but to share this message? Because it's not really a message. It's the truth. And it's the only reason for me to even exist is to continue to remind myself to take responsibility for our power. Because when we take responsibility for our creatorship, can our world change? And I want to live in a world that we talk to each other instead of about each other. I want to live in a world that we don't see outside problems as outside problems, but as places within ourselves that are begging for integration, forgiveness, and love, and care. It's a different reality, but like I said, those planes of reality exist. We all know it, whether it's the string theory or, you know, uh, the, the, the dream world of Joe Dispenza. It does exist. TMS. Can I, uh, yeah. Can I interrupt? Yeah. Would you mind now taking those words and marrying them back to 
the fact that in in yourself you have a thinker a listener and someone else what well, i can't remember now can you go back to that internal dialogue that people have about what they're not good enough for you know that internal dialogue that tells them that they should that they should do this or they should do that you know about five minutes ago or so you talked about that and i i just think what you've just sure. said yeah. now i mean uh, connects it can, very well it can be perfect you can't, you can't get there until you let that dialogue go until you recognize until you recognize that this dialogue is also what's keeping you stuck it's it's a lie yeah that dialogue is the lie that was installed by you in the context of our environment and your karmic incarnation so real quick i mean it's good to talk about the story at the end at first as a religious boy it was very clear it was very very clear uh, i had to win god over i had to be a good boy i had to follow certain rules in order to be in the grace of god when I came to America, the story was a little different. I needed to have the right education. I needed to have know the right people. It's not what you know, it's who you know. Uh, I needed to have access to money. And then maybe I'll be part of something greater. Um, from there, I went to hypnosis and uh, neuro-linguistic programming, and it was about mastering. See, even mastering the inner talk, I didn't realize what I was mastering. So I was studying, I was still looking to get better. I was studying all these modalities of therapy and coaching and hypnosis. When I went into back into spirituality, this time in the form of Kabbalah in Los Angeles, uh, there was still a, like things to learn. I needed to purify myself. I needed to do certain things. I needed to meditate certain times. I needed to keep the Sabbath. There was things that I needed to do. Uh, and then when I got into shamanism, there was a whole lot of healing that I needed to do and a lot of forgiveness uh, in order for me to be whole. There was a constant story that I needed to be someone better. I needed to be more ready. I needed to have more money. I needed to, like, everything was about becoming instead of being. It was so accepted to strive. It still is so I accepted to strive to something that like this comment that I'm reading it's all a play of the ego when we have one ego and the ego says I need to become someone I need to be someone that when see when I was well a quick personal story when I was being a when I was using substances as an urban shaman I knew that I'm using uh, training wheels. I knew that I'm using a shortcut. And a shortcut doesn't mean a bad thing. I just knew that the experience that I'm looking for exists within all of us, but I found a good methodology. I found a good way to get inside and to hack myself into the dream. And I made a promise to myself, oh God, back then it was an outside God. And I made a promise and I said, I'm only gonna do this for two years and after two years, I'm going to be the medicine. I'm going to be the shaman. I am going to take it upon myself. But I didn't think I was ready. I didn't think I had it in me. So when two years left, I, there, I didn't change. I kept doing the same thing. I kept believing in the lie. Not that the medicine is the lie. I kept believing in the lie that I am not a shaman until I am healed. I'm not a shaman until I have access to certain medicine. I'm not a shaman until my community approves of me. I'm not a shaman until I didn't know what. I actually did not know what. I was in an endless chase after a validation and after approval. I always wanted to be the good boy. I always wanted people to like me. It was important to me that things on the outside reflected to me being a good person. Uh, you know, for me, I spent three years, guys, three years in isolation. I literally spent three years. I haven't, I, you know, when Tovo used to ask me, what do you do? I said, I work for God. It's because for three years, it was just about me. I decided that I'm going to remember who I am. And it doesn't matter what it's going to take. And I spent three years 
basically on my own observing my thoughts not too crazily but just observing what who is running the show and what is happening Precisely. exactly yeah. that's yeah. that's the that's the key right. that i was trying to get you to talk about because it's who's running the show isn't you know, that in a voice that's criticizing you or is it you is it right. your spirit when I, I you know I, I did have one i had a bunch of those it was all related to this experience where i am noticing myself explaining myself to myself i am noticing that i'm pitching myself why i am i'm fit to I do what i want to do that for me <laughs> <laughs> and and i started to have compassion i started to have real compassion for that person me who's always explaining himself to himself and i kind of gave up it wasn't like i was like and now i'm gonna do it and i i literally this i i i went back to like this place where i said my hands are up i am i know i know that there, i'm destined for something greater but i am being run i'm being run by my own explanations to myself of myself and i love it, I love it. and that's honestly that's the observation the awareness is was the beginning it happened 10 years ago it was the beginning of my journey and the only thing i can report back now 10 years later is this other side of the story and re realizing that the power that i've been praying to and being really used i mean i've i have created new realities on demand many times but only when i was in trouble you see the problem there most of us do it we get into a corner we get troubled and then we we, we, we awaken we're like you know it's like everything we we like holy shit one second i'm the one dreaming this i know you know what i'm talking about the this addiction this 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 journey it's a day it's an addiction guys the highs and the lows the highs and the lows forget drugs forget drugs drugs are nothing drugs are nothing compared to the addiction of I need the highs, I need the lows, I need the highs, I need the lows. There's something outside of me I need to strive to. Until I decided that I actually am okay with a boring life. I don't need all these high and lows. I do not need to rise up from the ashes. I do not need to make out with the ashtray just to come out of it and say, look, I did it. That's, you know, Jesus did it and I love him. But I think that, and I think that his biggest message was that Christ consciousness is in, in your imagination is that we are the father we're the son we're the holy ghost it's all in us it really 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 truly is so what are your what are your tips and tools for Mia she's asking you shared about your journey and you know um did, she wants to know if you had any kind of teacher but basically, and can you give some advice tips? Because there are some people are suffering in this moment. Okay. Can I just interrupt there? Rose. Yeah. He already has. Right. This but this whole conversation has been yeah. about. Maybe, maybe Mia wants. First of all, Mia can always. I uh, mean, Mia and anyone watching this can always get in touch with me, and I would love to share and be a, as a personal guide. Uh, now that we've all gone on Zoom. I recognize that we can go on these journeys even quicker and easier because it's actually easier these days to get on the phone, get on Zoom. You don't even have to do video and to remember who you are. It's been a magnificent uh, switch. Uh, yeah. and, and, you know, if you go to therealgame.life, you'll find me. That's how you find me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Tips, tips. You know, go the real the, the first of all give yourself a pat in the back or pat in your consciousness back to to know that if this is really interesting to you if this is something that's calling you then you know you have created this moment and congratulations really you you are at the precipice of surrendering to your creator you are just oh, knowing that, just knowing that uh, i'll give you a couple of things some mantras observe observe look for the spaces between the i and the m and go back to the dream do whatever it takes to go back to the dream take long walks sit there and daydream 
I know it's such a it's such a it's such a weird advice to give society now, but go back to the dream, go back to the dreamer, not just the dream, the dreamer. Cultivate practices where you are observing yourself, you are observing your not your thoughts. I mean, no disrespect. You can uh, just observe yourself thinking. Remember that suffering is clinging. All suffering is clinging to a form. So notice that all the clinging is where we suffer. What you see is true. What you want to become, who you are, is all true. Just do not get identified with it. Ego is not the issue. Being identified with one ego is the issue. I'm a teacher. I'm a father. I'm a lover. I'm a nut job. I'm many things. But above all, I'm also one. I am also one. Everything exists within me. Seven planes of consciousness, according to the chakras. Many people and all of them. In the seventh chakra, there is only you. There is only one. So practices and self-care rituals by which you are looking in the mirror and winking to yourself <laughs> and recognizing that you have been on this entire long journey to remember and awaken to your creatorship. Why the pain? Why the pain, Dr. Oria? Why the it, pain, Madonna? Why? Uh, <laughs> because if, if the creator could create anything at any time, which it can, then what's, you know, why did it split up into 8 billion pieces? The creator wants to get to know itself, and it designed a game in which by you forget, and you leave yourself breadcrumbs. You leave yourself breadcrumbs along your journey, back inside, back to the dream. So when we feel pain, when we suffer, those are all breadcrumbs. Those are all residue of our doubts and our fears. It's nothing to be ashamed of. It's all perfect. It's how it is. Why the pain? Because you're calling yourself back home. You're calling yourself, you know, to a place of ownership and responsibility. Why the pain? Oh, so you can feel compassion for yourself and love people around you who have pain instead of avoiding people who have pain. Why is not the pain going away? It is. It actually is. Slowly. It's up to you. My pain is going away. And when it comes back, is it a message? Do you get angry? Do you just say, I love you, pain? When it comes back, when it comes back, I'm honest. Okay? I'm honest. And I go, look at you, Aurea. Look at you. Yeah, you, you just love this remembering journey. You just want to remember who you, 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 the, you know what? What if my karma, what if my dharma, what if your dharma is to wake up every day again and again and again, every day from scratch? Imagine that's your karma. So yes, you experience pain again. Yes, you experience suffering again. And what if it comes in child? What if it starts in childhood? The pain. Then you are. All you of know, them do. Then, then, then it's we all we. It starts whenever it starts. Just you know, you're either. I think I read it in the comments something about striving, or you're either creating, or you're a victim to your own creation. Okay. You can experience pain and recognize the magnificence of this, bio, this bio, you know, miracle of biology that is able to give you feedback based on who you think you are and what you believe you are. And yes, it can come from your genes and your expressions and your environment. It's still you. It's still who you are. So I can look at my back pain and go, what the, f you know, like what the hell with everything I know? Like why? Why do I, I still have back pain? And I can say. Because I would probably fall asleep otherwise. Like, I am on this journey to feel support, to be support. And until I am free completely, which can happen, you know, during death. It doesn't have to happen in the way you think. Why is pain, why is suffering, why is it so dramatic? You know, it's only dramatic if you think you need to be in a, in a different way. If you think that you have to be in a more perfect way, the minute you start accepting your journey as everything which gets you closer to God, everything which gets you closer to the dreamer, mm -hmm. then you're taking the power back. And when you take the power back, you can change the pain. You can, if it keeps coming back, then you say, 
I'm bored of this one. I'm bored. I'm just bored of this reminder. I'm ready. Confront your fear. Confront your doubt. Because you have to look yourself in the mirror and say, I'm still afraid. I am still afraid to surrender to my creatorness. I'm still afraid to fully merge with the creator. And that's okay. This is what's happening. Because I promise you, when this pain goes away, as the game of life, you will have other challenges. You will have other things that push you against your own antagonist. So yourself to the pain, to the challenge, because it will keep, it will appear. And you have to believe that you're stronger than the challenge. Like if Mia has, if Mia has a lot of pain and it's not going away, is she resisting her create her beauty? Is she resisting the creator in her? Listen, the moment, this is very sketchy stuff, okay? Why sketchy? Because if she's looking and she's waiting to hear something that she doesn't already know, that it points to the lie. So we have to be very sensitive with this information. We cannot go back to someone and, you know, and say, hey, by the way, you know, this is all you. It's only when they already know, it's already when they already know and they suspect that there is a connection between their being and their physical expression, whew, can they hear it? Uh, if she's asking, why does the pain keep coming back? She already knows. She already knows. If she's asking to surrender deeper to her own creatorness, if she's surrendering to strengthening and cultivate a deeper connection with herself, if she's asking, I want to know, I want to remember, I want to feel healthy, then the first thing she ought to do is remember and have the courage, have the courage to not be so identified with someone in pain, with not to be so identified with the story of her childhood, not to be so identified with the story that has brought her to this point because she's getting a lot of meaning and a lot of value from where she came from. And it takes a lot of courage to go, and I choose, and I choose to dream a new reality for me. I choose to create a new reality for me. And that means that all of the goodies that I got out of my story, I'm going to have to let them go. All of the value and the compassion, I'm going to have to let it go. And I can use it when, it, when it's necessary, but I'm not going to be used by it. It's, mm -hmm. it's a matter of lucid dreaming, and it's not... It's 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 it goes really deep within. Do not underestimate. Right. Do not underestimate your journey into remembering that you are the creator. You have created these traps and these methods and these pains and suffering in order to bring you closer. If you're truly ready, ask yourself, who 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 will I be without my back pain? Who will I be without my pain? What do I have to give up? What do I have to give up in my life to be pain-free? Really? The answer will surprise you. And the beauty it's of it is that... Take back to wholeness. Yes. Take it back now to wholeness. Yes. That you are whole. Yes. You are complete within yourself from day one. Yes. The cycle goes back into no, the oneness in you, the wholeness in you. And yeah, and, 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 Rose and Mine's maybe 35th. We're going on 40 shows. It's almost going to be a year. Wow. Congratulations. Me. Now, do you know that there's nothing new under the sun every week? This is the message. It's just yeah. the way that you're giving it is just absolutely magnificent and stunning the way we're hearing it tonight. But, Rose, is it true? There's nothing new here. For our sweet dear, our sweet me, and our sweet Patty, there's nothing new here. I wish there could be another new potion, you know, but it's the same message, right, Rose? Yeah. But it's a beautiful message that you're one, that you're whole, you're complete. Yeah. You're worthwhile. Right. You've got you've got a space in the world to discover who you are, and Aurea, you've put it really, really well together. You the know, whole really, idea that we. You are complete in from day one, from that first cry when you were born, mm -hmm. you were complete. Could I just add also, I've worked in uh, palliative care with the death and with dying people, 
And it's so beautiful when a person has completed their lives and their whole, and they actually go in peace. It actually gives me goosebumps when I think about it again. And they go completely whole in their death and in their dying and in their goodbyes. And it's just such a beautiful space to be in. Sometimes they struggle and you know that they're not complete, that things haven't gone, they haven't found their true selves and they're going again too soon. But I just want to share that with you all because what Aurea has talked about now is finding that when you're 40 or when you're 30 or when you're 20 and then being able to live your life complete for the rest of your life. Yeah. And when yeah. people hurt you, they actually haven't hurt you. They're hurting themselves. Now, when people are cruel or whatever, it's not about you being hurt by them. It's about you seeing them in their troubles and in their space and in their inability to connect. And Aurea talked about forgiveness and he talked about that notion that it doesn't matter. He didn't say those words that it doesn't matter, but it actually doesn't matter because in acceptance, you're able to cope with life's tragedies. Yeah, the, the truth is that the childhood that I had, which gave me a lot of background, it gave me a lot of value. I was an underdog and, you know, I was always also allowed to fail because, you know, my childhood was so rough. And I walked around with that story for so long that when a friend asked me, like, who do you, what do you have to lose if you surrender to the truth, if you surrender to your creatorship? I was like, my story, because it's, it's, it's everything, it's who I am. And we started working, you know, you're speaking about the subconscious uh, on the comments. We started, I started really, reliving my childhood as a wonderful childhood, you understand? As a wonderful childhood that has allowed me to be who I am right now. It was everything yeah, I needed yeah. to experience. It was everything I needed to experience. My parents gave me everything they could in order for me to be here right now. And, you know, I like I read one of the comments saying, uh, I am a success story. It's true, it's true until you become the I amness in your life in all areas, then you will be a victim of the outside world. Can I yeah. interrupt for a moment and just remember Moses in the burning bush? Right. And he took off his shoes and he said, Who are you? And the response was, I am who am. Yeah, I am. Yeah. yeah, I am. And then yeah. Moses was able to take those people out of Egypt, across the Red Sea, back in, over to Israel. Mm -hmm. Wow. And, and, what did, the, and what did they do? And what did I they do? Am, and what did they do the whole time in the desert? Every second day, every time they forget about the last miracle, they'd come back and they'd say, <laughs> what the hell? Did you bring us here to die? I mean, this is our story. We're a bunch of gods walking around pretending not to be gods. And we can have a miracle yesterday, but today we're like, this is how good we are. This is how yeah. powerful of creators we are. We have the ability to create and destroy. See, that's why it's very dangerous to believe that God is outside of you. It's very, very, very dangerous. And I'm sorry to burst that bubble. It's very dangerous to believe that something outside of you has more power than you. Sure, you did not create the universe. That's true. The moon doesn't rise out of your ass, but <laughs> But the way <laughs> did Michael Galinsky tell you that one? <laughs> no, no, I, but the entire it's that I the, am that's within you that uh, he took on that I am. Yes, we all have out. that power. We have we yeah. have the same power as the creator, and we have been given this power because the creator itself is like, listen, I am at maximum creator capacity with this nothingness. I'm going to let this run wild. I'm going to create a bunch of creators in my image with them and I'm gonna make them all forget. Mm -hmm. I wanna make them all forget to see where we come to. What will we create together mm -hmm. as creators remembering themselves? What kind of a world 
are we going to create together as we remember our true powers? It is such a magnificent, wonderful shift. I mean, just, you know, put it, you know, you want to, I know people want to complicate it, and I get it. Well, listen, listen, I, listen, I, 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 I meditate, and we do all that stuff too. But just remember that there is nothing outside of you that has any power over you, that has more power than you, yeah. nothing. You start recognizing that everything outside of you is actually, like I said, like I said, I remember that. Everything outside is mirroring, is a reflection of a deep inner dream. Deep, 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 deep. And if you want to hack it, just pay attention to it. <laughs> really. This is a lesson really. hacking yourself. Yes. Yes. That's why, again, that's why people take substance and psychedelics. It's yeah, a hack. You got to get through the barriers. Mia, yeah. with all her brilliance, me with all her brilliance, said, she said this, or she quoted it, that the last thing you have to lose is the pain and you hold on to it because you mm. don't want to lose. Like, it's a, quite an interesting paradox of a statement. Yeah. There's, there's a couple of questions I want to answer. Yeah. Uh, I, want you to listen, I want you to answer Linda's um, question. I, I want to answer Patty first. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> uh, she said, uh, it is taking longer than, okay. So I grew up in Kabbalah and it's a good metaphor because my stepfather, who I grew up with, we had a book, it was called Sefer Yetzirah, which is the book of creation. I swear to God. And all the gods. Don't and he, 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 listen, he told me, he told me, my stepfather, which was my father, he told me, do not touch this book. I'll break your hands. That's literally what I heard. A little violence, right? Because that's book. That's the book that can drive people mad. That's the secrets of all the universe. And I grew up with this belief that you had to be 40 years old to study Kabbalah. So why am I 40 years old all of a sudden and recognizing this and going, oh, I think I get it. It doesn't mean it's true. It just means that's the story I lived out. It's an that's part of my role. It's part of my dharma. I needed to go full lost. I need to experience full lost and full amnesia and kind of seeing my life and creating it. And only when my inner nightmares and, and worse fears and terror started to manifest as an outside reality, that's when I was like, oh my God, holy shit. That's what it took for me to step away from the, the you know, reality and to go deep within, that's my story, okay? Why is it taking you so long? Can it be done at this very moment? The truth is, once you, remember, once you know this truth, which you do, it's not gonna be as long as it took you until now. I promise you. I'm trying <laughs> to avoid this. Uh, once, once I remembered, see some people will hear this and in their mind, they won't get it the same way we don't see certain colors. If you're in your mind, you never understand the fact that you're not your mind, that you ha you're not your thoughts. So people are not even listening to this, which is fine. But those who are listening to this, the part of you that's listening, do not get tempted because your mind is like, let me tell you why it's all wrong. Because the mind doesn't want to be let go of. The mind doesn't want, the mind's job is to protect you from danger or the unknown. So it's like, no, you no, 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 no. It took you so long. It took you so long. There's something wrong with you. This is not true for you. Or you got to do something. Give me a break. You have to earn this. You have to give the mind a room in your house. Just don't give it the whole house. You're like, all right. That's just, fine. You know, just a closet. A closet. Yeah, a drawer. Just a drawer. Whatever. Oh, yeah, give it a whole room. Oh, give it a room. Like, give it room. You know, we can't, we cannot ignore our antagonist. We cannot ignore the Satan or the devil or whatever you want to call it, the resistance. It's there to remind you who the hell you actually are. Lucifer, they're not some dis they're not like external parts that you have to kill. It's parts of you that are reminding you who you are. Yeah, the time to accept, really. Yeah. So how did we create a current global situation? That's Linda. How? It's created by default, by our lack of responsibility, period. When we don't take responsibility for our creatorness, when we think that if we just focus on the right things and we make money and we do, like everything is being created, money, 
the culture, capitalism, it's all created. There is no good, there's no bad, I mean, depending, long term. So we create out of the sleep, we're like, I don't feel safe. So I need more money and more status and more things and more houses and more cars. And I have to be a good guy and I have to be a, whatever it is. I have to create a construct in my reality in order to feel safe. Now that we are awakening into our own creatorness, the best way to awaken a uh, sleeping giant is to basically show the sleeping giant that he has no power because he's worried about one tick in the back of his you know, neck. The current global situation is actually, is actually a, an invitation. It's a, it's a virus of, it's a real virus, but it, what it's really showing us, it's a virus of consciousness. It's showing us, by the way, by the way, things that you don't know about, you're terrified of. That's yeah. just so you know. Things that you don't know about, it doesn't matter how dangerous they really are and compared to anything else, you should be terrified. So then it's like a big blackboard, okay? And if you come into a classroom, huge like college, university classroom, there's a huge blackboard, it's black. There's a thousand students there. The teacher comes to the blackboard and puts a little dot in the middle. Everybody looks at the dot, right? That's the current situation. We are all just looking at the dot. The truth is, this dot has been around all along. There is always something. We always have a virus in our life that we're waiting for it to be over. There's always some problem that if we just had the vaccine, if we just had the solution, if we just got that job, if my wife would just be nicer to me, whatever it might be, all your problems go away. We didn't create the global situation as much as we're just being shown what we really believe about ourselves. We're, we're merely shown our own level of certainty and the creator game. We are being shown how vulnerable we are to stuff that we don't really know. We are being shown how, you know, how much care we actually have for elderly. It's, it's a, we created, we created a, 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 as a, basically as a mechanism for us to look inward. We really did. Uh, because now we can see what's really important to us. I grew up in Israel, and the only thing we used to worry about was uh, terrorism and bombings and intifada. The world didn't change, okay? Just the type of problems changed. Now terrorism is not a thing anymore, which I really like. You know, the conversation has changed. Now the terror, the only terrorism we have is, you know, our Avery our neighbors for wearing a mask or not, or do you know what I mean? Like it's a real thing, but it's global, it's shared. I don't anymore live in Israel. Since the pandemic, I'm just a guy with a camera. It's beautiful. And uh, I think now I'm gonna go a little utopian on you. In a hundred years from now, or maybe even 50, people are gonna say, do you remember the time that not everybody was online? Do you remember the time that, you know, there were people who just really couldn't uh, tie into the system where anybody could create anything they wanted? Do you remember the time that information wasn't really available to everyone? This is a massive shift, okay? If you put the pandemic and, and you just look at what else is going on in the world, in 1996, I had a company that sold high-speed internet access. Like, we went from dial-up to always on. That's what my company did. We promised what's happening now 22 years ago. We used to promise the life that people are living now 22 years ago. Now, why did it have to be a virus to bring everyone online? And yeah, those are all just uh, speculative questions. The truth is, we all needed something to happen. We all wanted something to happen. Some were hoping for aliens, some were hoping for some apocalypse, some were hoping for, you know, we all just wanted to be right, proved right about something. And it came, okay? Change came in the form of coronavirus. I mean, I'm not gonna get all crazy on you, seventh chakra, crown, corona. You can go really deep into noticing this invitation, okay, to pay attention to what connects us to life to our fear, to our dreams. So what 
how safe we really believe that we are and what we believe about our viability and worthiness and safetyness uh, of this culture. I invite anybody, it's going to be a little iffy, I invite anybody that's worried about the, the you know, this situation is to just zoom out, okay? And zoom out of your life and zoom out on the situation and ask yourself, really, ask yourself, were you either hoping for change, inviting change, knew that change was ine inevitable? And how bad is it, really, compared to all the other doom and gloom scenario? Isn't life graceful with us? If this is the biggest and most massive change humanity has seen in, I don't know, millennia, can't you see the grace? Can't you see the, 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 the beauty in this pandemic and what it is actually doing to consciousness and to the world? We may look like we are all isolated, but we have a shared problem for the first time. Misery loves company. And I mean it at this context, I mean it well. We all got out of our own asses just for a few minutes for the first time in ever. Everything we believed, all the safety structures we believed in have collapsed. Because collapse, collapse is, you know, people are waiting for the currency system to go away and for things to break down and for Pizzagate to be revealed. And no one is going to save us, okay, from ourselves. No one. It's just not going to happen. Nothing is going to destroy us either. Where we are right now is exactly who you think you are. And you can look at the pandemic and realize that you are in the midst of a massive shift. And it's mostly about how you, what your relationship to fear is, what your relationship to responsibility is, and what your relationship to your life is. Because the same dreams, I know so many people who had this dream of going out there and being light workers and contributing that the pandemic actually opened the door for them. Many, 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 many millions of people. It opened the door for them because if I told you a year ago, by the way, I'm a shaman and I do sessions by Zoom, you'd be like, what? What are you doing? Now, you know, shamans doing sessions on Zoom is, of course, it's normal. Look at all the other things that are happening. You know, there's, how did we create the global situation? We did. We dreamed this up. We allowed this to happen. All on the journey of remembering who we are and taking responsibility. You know, Rose and I are not going on vacation, but if we did, we would have you and Michael Galinsky to be our our um, substitutes, and it would be some show, <laughs> you and Michael. But Rose and I don't take vacation. We're going to be on here Monday nights for the rest of our life. And if you'd like to come back. I'd love to come back. Blow our minds. You are invited. I'd love to come back. And I really would have hid. You know, you wanted to talk about this conversation. I have hid most of my life. I've been waiting. I've been, I have be been becoming teacher. I've been getting ready to be a teacher. I have been on the trap of preparing and training and healing and being worthy of myself and understanding God for 40 years. And now, as I battle and my fears and my doubts, as I look at my own life and go, my job, your job, is to shine, really. And exactly. to shine. So. Oh, it's a long way of saying, hey, I'm here. I would love, be honored to be in your life. I, I would really love it. There's nothing that makes, like, this is this my jam. Like, What's life? Mine and Rose's life. No, man, I'm pitching here. I'm in front of the camera. Like, <laughs> what are you doing? Like, I had a whole thing. Tonight, tonight, this tonight. is like the end of the infomercial, but by the way, you were a star in the moment. Tonight. This is a special night. It's a special moment, okay? Jupiter and Mars are, are kissing. That's true. It's the birth of the sun. It's amazing. It's the birth of the sun now. What because it's the, long, it's the longest night. Yeah. It's the longest night of the year, which means the sun is being birthed again. Oh, the sun is the coming short, back. Okay, it's the shortest night for us. Wow. Yeah. See, I love it. See, that's the thing about the yin and the yang and duality. It's all beautiful metaphors, 
but it's all a product of the creator it's all a product of uh, the creator wanting to get to know himself it's or herself it's magnificent and i believe in the seasons and i'm so excited that i'm here on the solstice i love being here with you guys and once again since i can finish my infomercial moment I've, you know, if you go to the real game that life, you can book a session with me. I'd love it. I'd love to be in your life. Yeah, of course, man. Come on. Okay, there is a real game. <laughs> and Rose and I are not doing the real game. What do you mean? Who, who even like we've been talking about this exact thing right now for like a year now. I so know. you are you see. I'll tell you something. When I was uh, something personal, when I was doing the journey work once in a while people would walk up to me and they would say you're the real deal now i remember believing them but i didn't really believe what they were saying and i was afraid that like the part of me is like oh look you're being validated the real deal you are the real deal tova you're the real deal rose you are the real deal the real deal is when you are taking responsibility for the dreamer when you're like oh yeah this is this is a dream that I'm dreaming. I am in partnership with the divine. I'm in partnership with my God. I'm in partnership with life itself. This is the real deal. Like you have been doing this all along. Tova, I met you and all the pain that I've carried with me for, I don't know, 20 years. You just started talking at me. I don't know exactly what you said when I was on your table, but all of a sudden, I mean, I remember watching the TMS documentary. I remember, it's just never been the same. I mean, when the pain does come back in like this ways where I'm like, I can recognize it. I can recognize that I am, yeah, I'm not being vigilant, okay? I'm not being vigilant to how I create my dream. I'm not being vigilant to my own cosmology of creation. But... You know, you got it, Tova. I mean, you do. Like you, I, I, it doesn't matter what you told me because you embody it. Because this is who you are. Just being around you, I understood. And it doesn't matter what you are actually telling me or what methods you use, or what this page is called. It's you. It's you guys. You have this heart that says there is a mind-body connection. People need to remember and take responsibility for who they are. We are creating this. There's nothing else to do. There's literally nothing else to do right now in this time than to take responsibility. So thank you both. Can we, you can we, can we, you, you, me, and Danielle are going to get on a plane and go visit Rose. I can meet Rose face to face and give her a hug so tight. I, I, I've been playing the didgeridoo since I'm 16. I would love to go on a walkabout. I've been wanting <laughs> to go on a walkabout. The, my first book in English was uh, Mutant Message Down Under. Uh, it's so I look forward to hanging out, Rose. Maybe I'll bring the dig next time. Good. Aria, <laughs> Aria is the father of two boys. One is ten, and one is four, and they are these like blonde-haired boys. His little boy has got like white blonde hair, like I've never seen like an angel. And his name is. His name yeah. is. I don't, I don't want to. I don't want to like lose credibility here. No, no. His name is Navi Osher, which Navi. Uh, yeah, Navi, which uh, translates to either bringer of joy or prophet of joy. Yeah. But I needed a cheerleader, you know, to tell you the truth. The last three years were four years, five years, really, ten years, forty years <laughs> were really rough. Uh, I've spent most of them like literally depressed. Like, oh, like pressed in. The last three years were really tough because I, I had to start again and come back to Israel. And uh, I thought I would have to reinvent myself. But my dream came true and I only had to remember. But the point is, this little boy is, you know, just didn't let me, never let me sink. And I have another, another beautiful boy, Hanuman, and he's eight years old. Yeah, eight years old. Uh, but he, he, you know, he, he got like, he got the, the more he was around at the time that i was really lost so it's a little more serious 
<laughs> well, beautiful. It's not easy, you know, like you're really, you're, you're juggling a lot. A wife, children, yourself, the world. You, you buried your father yet, a year ago. It's like, you know, and... Um, it's beautiful, though. It's beautiful. There is, I, I, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful for the glimpse, for the opportunity to remember this. I don't have to. I swear, like, you don't have to. People don't have to. This is not everyone's purpose to remember that they are the creator right now. It's just we, we all have our own perfect unfolding. But if you are on the journey and you suspect this to be true, then follow the rabbit hole. Like, look into it. It will change your life. So, that was a moment, all, hey? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I did. Uh, Patty said, did I, I had serious sciatic pain, Patty. Like, I used to, I was only in my early 20s. I remember going downhill in, in my car. And downhill, you have to press the brake. And it would be so painful. I would be screaming from pain in the car. I would pull over and lay on the grass crying off the Palisades in New Jersey. I suffered from sciatic pain for a long time. And weird story. I go and I get uh, x-rayed by regular whatever. And they give me bad news. Just really, really bad news. I sent them to my grandmother. Okay, because My grandmother was a nurse. And... She insisted. She's like, I want to I want to see your x-rays. So I sent it to her, and she tells me, don't ever get x-rays again. I'm not sending them to you. You're fine. <laughs> I never got x-rays again. I actually, like, I, I understood what she's saying. I didn't get the extent of it. I didn't, wasn't introduced to healing your back by Sarno, not until I moved to California. But the pain went away for a while. It came back when... Uh, Actually, when I met my wife and I got into an intimate relationship uh, with her, then my pain came back. I could see that my pain came back when I was in very stressful situations. Uh, and I would go and I would go do the inner work. Uh, but again, I'm just being very, very honest here. You're I never took responsibility for the now. power. You grew up with horrible asthma and you're, it's much better now. Anything that would, you know, give me the excuse to feel ugly and unworthy and just imperfect and, you know, someone who has to earn their way, I have manifested and I have lived through it. Now, I don't just see it as a way of awakening and the path back to divinity, but I also see it just as life, okay, as being compassionate. I cannot, I always felt like I was close to God and I have a good relationship with God but there was some uh, I don't know if ego is the right I actually I, I was confused I thought that there is there is like something special you know I needed to create a false sense of identity like I'm special and that actually kept me alienated that kept me disconnected Rose um, can yeah. you reinterpret that as seeing yourself as flawed and you needed to heal but in right. actual fact, you're not flawed. No, no. no. What, I, what, what I've so what I've come to, yeah. yeah. No, I say what I've come to recognize it's, it's, it's all, it's my dharma, my karma, my incarnation chose, okay, to create this story, not just so I can heal myself because that's very sweet, but I can look around me and I can be a, I can be a light. I can be a light and. Not looking outside, not going to the fishbowl and knocking on the fishbowl and saying, hey, come outside to play. It's knowing the feeling of being stuck in a fishbowl, knowing the feeling of drowning, knowing the feeling of pain and suffering. Just so now as I am shining and I'm available, it's not in theory. It's not in theory. Yeah. Nobody wants a guru or a guide or someone to tell yeah. you what to do. We need people to have, that have experienced it themselves. So there's nothing wrong. It's all been beautiful. It's all of it. Uh, it's, a, it's, 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 the, it's a blessing and it can be a curse, okay, to remember who you are. It's a curse because you can't look back. It's like the red pill and the blue pill. Once you recognize that you're in charge and you're the source of your life, that's why people go harder into addictions. People go harder into distractions because... It's much easier to live in someone else's reality and live in Netflix world 
uh, as opposed to taking ownership for yours. It's much easier to numb the pain with drugs and alcohol and to numb the creative process as opposed to feeling it all. And then if you want, you can go have a drink. It's two different things. Um, again, I'll just say that when I wrote that flyer, when you guys asked me for the flyer for my bio, I could tell how that story has allowed me to hide, how that story has allowed me to, not, to, to actually not be ready to serve. It's almost like I needed a story to feel like I'm good enough to do what I'm doing. And now I realize that that too is a lie. We do not need a story. We don't. No. You're waking up in the morning saying, my existence is a gift and I want to be a light to others just because I feel it, not because of what I've experienced. I want to, how about this? The love, the love needs to be there first. Like if you want to go teach yoga because you say, when I teach yoga, I give love to the world, then you're trapped because then you're always depending on yoga because you don't see yourself as love. If you say, I'm a lover, I love, and I'm going to use yoga as a method to love people, then you got the game. People always, not always, there's a tendency to focus on the wrong things. There's a tendency to say, I need to be a yoga teacher so I can love. I need to be a shaman. I need to be a teacher. I need to be whatever so I can share my gifts to the world. No. Go back. Go back. Being creator saying, I am love. I am light. Okay. I'm interested in shamanism. I'm interested in yoga. I'm interested in sound healing. I'm interested in storytelling. I'm interested in doing nothing. I'm interested. Be love first. Be we heal are love. first. Yeah. We are and, love. We yeah. are love. The I am is love. And the I am is love for the universe. Yeah, literally. And when you've got the I am in you, you can radiate your love. But unfortunately, we've yeah. got layers of self-doubt and a notion of being flawed. So we have to remove those notions so that the capacity to love comes out fully. Yeah, or, or like, you know, I don't know if I'm removing personally. I just look at it, man, and I look at it and I go, look at you. Look at you. Like I had a client call yesterday, and honestly, I was, she was a, first, as a new client. She literally just PayPal'd me. And she's like, I need you right now. I was like, all right, that sounds good. And I call her up, and the first thing she says is, I'm being evicted from my house. And I'm like, oh, shit, you know, like, this is, this is, this is it. This is, what the hell am I going to say to that? You know what I mean? I just closed my eyes, and I let everything go. And I let everything go. And from that point on, the session was quick. Because it only took literally 10 minutes where she recognized that she actually created this. She created this situation. She didn't want to live there. She's been, you know, in battling this living situation for quite some time. So, of course, now as she's stepping towards her creatorness, she's going to manifest whatever it takes for her to be free. Wow. But it, no, my point is, the whole point was, you think I didn't have crazy doubt? Right? That was the point. When she was like, yeah, shit's hitting the fan, of course I heard, yeah, you see? You, uh, like all these the stuff, like inside is okay, like it's just a different movie theater. You just gotta walk away from that theater. It's there, it's still playing. I just walk away to another movie theater. That's all. You know, this knowledge that you're the director, the actor, and the audience. The father, the yeah. son, the Hollywood. you're the director, the actor, and the audience. What are you going to do with that truth? <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, if, you, if that doesn't make you want to free yourself by playing in your incarnation, facing my fears, who do we celebrate in society? Who do we celebrate in society? We celebrate people who are battling their fears. That's all. If you look at anyone in society, good or bad, whatever you think of them, that we celebrate. We celebrate people that face their demons in front of us because we want to know that it's possible. I mean, what, what difference does it make 
you know, to see Mike Tyson, you know, rise and fall and rise and fall. What difference does it make in the world, really? It does, because we're seeing somebody rising and remembering who they are. That's what Mike Tyson said. Finding you know? Joe, finding Joe, you no, know, finding Joe, the the, the hero. Yeah. The yeah. Hero. So uh, you said, hey, you said I'm, I'm adding, you know, let's not remove the doubts and remove the fears. Let's just look at them and go, thank you for reminding me what I really want. Thank you for showing me, you know, depression. When I'm depressed, and I know what depressed is, it takes me hours sometimes. It used to take me hours sometimes to get in back in the creator zone. As I notice it now, when I'm depressed now, I notice it and I go, look at you, man. <laughs> this is beautiful. Like you just, you're just refusing. You're just like, nah, 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 I'm not, I'm not in charge. Nah, nah, I'm not the power here. Like I look at it and I'm like, look at you, you beautiful thing. Like you're just so stubborn. You love this shit. You love coming up from the ashes. It takes a while, you know, to come up with a new story. It takes a while to be like, oh, You're funny I, man. I, I can do a new thing. Like, I don't have to be depressed to feel better later. I can see, all right, you know what I really want to do is call Tova and schedule this Be Live thing. Are you ready? Are you not ready? What's the difference? Do it. Do it. <laughs> that, you know, that's, that's who we believe. That's who we follow. That's who we want to get guidance from. Because we want to see people battling their fears. We want to see people embracing their doubt. Don't ever think, at least in my story, that it just goes away. They say Frank Sinatra used to throw up before going on stage until he was whatever, in his 80s. It's not about, you know, becoming a new person. And uh, No, it's acknowledging your creatorship and realizing that you created the antagonist, you created the doubt, you created this as part of the real game of life. Huh? You like that? It's, it's part of it. It's just part of it. It's the, my son, I see him all day. He's playing with Legos, and it goes up, and then he destroys it, and it builds something else. He doesn't walk around saying, oh, my God, I just built this beautiful thing, and i got to break it. That's what we do as adults. We're just walking around going, oh, but should I do this or should I do that? The creator creates, you know? I used to be really annoyed <coughs> at, at the healing process because I recognized, I knew a truth. When I was doing my shamanism, I mean, with substance, I used to be, I used to have the, this heartbreak. It was heartbreaking seeing that people would rather know what's wrong with them than not know anything at all. People would rather know that they are on a journey and they know there is something wrong with them as opposed to just being creators. Like that's, too much. It's too yeah, much for this definitely. culture. You know, like there is a sick, beautiful addiction to problems and issues. So I will love the underdogs. That's why we love this stuff because it gives us meaning. Viktor Frankl talked about it. It's okay to have meaning to come out of it. And it's really okay to be creator. It's really okay to have a new set of problems. Like, a new set of issues. Okay, you know, you face your fears, you face your doubts. Let's see what happens next. I, I promise you, I've been through this. A whole new set of challenges come. But, you know, I invite you to, if you're bored of your issues, if you're bored of them, maybe you take a, take a chance and take some more responsibility of your creatorship. See what happens. What is your website? Responsibility.com? What should I tell no, you? No, no, no. <laughs> the, the, the real game dot life. The real game dot life. Rose, mm -hmm. what do say to this boy here. All right. You want to say goodbye? See you in the dream. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go. I want to go all night. I want to go all night. I want to pull an all nighter with Rose. <laughs> well, that's nice. All it's right. fine by me because it's only nine o'clock in the morning here. So. <laughs> Do you There's think not, you yeah, guys kicked off the uh, the Facebook airways if we had Aurea once a month? Like, do you think that? <laughs> think that you, you guys can discuss this on your own. I think I I, I want to leave on a high note before you know because it, <laughs> <laughs> this is good. This is. Uh, is I, didn't expect this. I didn't expect this show because I just I haven't talked to you in a while, but it is like wow. I mean, good. 
you know, it's just a beautiful journey and a beautiful, it's, <laughs> I'm like, I mean. <laughs> Tova, Tova, you created this. It's beautiful. You did. You really did. This is not, you really, really did. You, this is, this, this literally for anyone that's watching this, it's like, uh, I used to watch numbers and I loved seeing numbers, right? We liked like the one, one, ones and everybody's got their own thing. I don't know. I, you know, I used to go and see the numbers and see, oh my God, the universe is talking to me. You know, it's a sign. Now I recognize it and I see, okay, I'm still looking for signs and I'm dreaming this. Cool. When I see numbers that I like, it's not a validation from the outside world. Okay. It's a breadcrumb that you left behind by your higher self, by your dreamer saying, hey, you are creating this. It's okay. Keep, keep getting more conscious to that. When you, when you listen to the radio and some song comes up, all this stuff, it's your inner dream reminding you that you're in charge and you have a lot to say with what unfolds next. It doesn't matter how crazy you think it is. Because by the time you believe that just for half a second, you're, you're in, you're enlightened. There's no more enlightenment. There's no more getting somewhere. This is it. Right here, right now, remembering that you are the creator. You're not the only creator, but as far as you're concerned, you are the creator of your life. You have full creator capacity. You can be and do and dream so, anything so, you want as the long as- The Messiah is here. The Messiah is here. You're, what's Messiah, right? Mashiach. Mashiach is to anoint, right? That's literally what the translation means. You can anoint yourself. You can decide. I am saving myself. I am the Messiah of my life. I am taking ownership of the dream. I swear, guys, when I started this process, and it was someone basically still is helping me, sometimes every day reminding me this. There's someone on my case. And this, what I'm doing right now, giving out a website and having sessions and having clients this was in my dream i took a break i took a break for almost three years not working not doing sessions because i literally felt unfit literally i felt unfit i did not trust my own creation because anything that i touched first succeeded and then it got to a point that my fears also manifested and i was really confused because I had what I wanted and what I didn't want at the same time. And I was getting too old to like blame anything on the outside. I was getting too old to think that there's something outside of me uh, that's controlling this. So when I came to Israel, it was with this place to go, okay, I want to know who I am. I want to I, I wanna understand who I really, really, really am. And it's only when I heard the whisper not through ayahuasca and MDMA and uh, thousands of psychedelic sessions that I've been on. And it was just literally on the phone with another human being saying, you know, you remember, you remember that you are the creator of your life. And you're addicted. I said, what? He says, you're addicted. You're addicted to the outside world. You're addicted to the illusion that there is an outside world that you're trying to be a part of. You are training to be someone your whole life. You're training to be a shaman. You're training to be a teacher. You're training to be an artist. When are you going to stop training? And stop doing. Is that yeah, it? and being. And start being. I was so angry at first. I was so angry at first. Like, oof. And then, I, you know, I, I just take some time. Take some time. Just look at it. Just look at this, look at the life, look at your life unraveling and go, holy smokes. I remember when I heard that guy, that weird guy on the Be Life thing with these two ladies. It started back then. And I can see, I can feel, I can experience that the outside reality is really a mirror reflection of my inner dream. And any time as a practitioner and a healer, when you come and you see other people, if you think, if you really think you can help them, if you really think that you can change their reality, it's like going to the mirror and, and painting the mirror. You can't paint the mirror. You can only paint yourself. 
So when I meet you, when I look at you, when I, whether it's on Zoom or in person, I know I'm looking at myself. I know I'm with myself. I am inviting myself into a conversation to see where do I need to remember? How am I reminding myself to take responsibility? Where do I need compassion? Where do I need love? Where in my life am I still doubting this? And everything becomes a healing journey. And I'm not trapped in it. I'm free to play in it. I'm free to live out my incarnation instead of resisting it. And, and, and you know, I, I used to, I used to basically go inside the movie set and go around and say, hey guys, this is just a movie. Hey guys, this is just a movie. Nobody wants to hear that shit because the movie in which we are generating has meaning and it has value. It is, it is designed for our growth. Now I recognize that it's a movie that is designed for the creator to get to know itself. So now it is my job, it is my role to play fully and act sacredly and impeccably in order to be the creator and be the light of my life. Having respect in places where I had disrespect, taking responsibility to power that before I wouldn't, be, I, I wouldn't take responsibility for. The game is taking responsibility for your divinity instead of putting it outside of you. Yes, it's really magnificent to believe in a God. It's really magnificent to know that Jesus and others before us have done tremendous work to remind us of who we are. But they've always pointed the finger inside. They've always told us we have the power. So now Excellent. is the time. Good. All right. Excellent. What a lovely way to wind up the, the session. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Now, anyone who's actually watching still, uh, any comments, any questions? It's morning time here in Australia, and I'm happy to spend a little while looking through the comments, and I can um, respond or whatever you want. So and I'll, I'll come back, check out the show page, and read the comments. I'll put a reminder on. Thank so, you. Thank yeah. you for that. Well, or we will see. All right. We will. This is not the last time we will be. A no. Three. This is not the do last you, time. Do you, do you kick me out? How does that work? No. So we say good night. We say, say good We say yeah. good night, Maria. We say um, Lala Tov. We Lala say, Tov. Namaste. Yeah. We just say like Rose. I just love this. I love this train ride with you, Rose. It's been ama It's amazing. And I'll see you tomorrow and for sure next week. Aurea, it's just, it's just I'm blessed to have you in this side of the globe. Um, all the best to you all out there. Have a wonderful night, wonderful morning. We'll see you next week with the help of God. Uh, happy Christmas, everyone. Yeah. Well. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Christmas. Bye. Happy holidays. Blessings.